When it comes to getting around our city, there's no shortage of options. Bikes, buses, and cars are all part of a giant transportation race that's helping people get where they need to be, when they need to be there. So just for fun, we thought we'd put these against each other in a time-honored tradition of the 21st century. That's right, it's an over-dramatized game show. Our race is going to start in one of the busiest transportation nodes of all of the HRM, Spring Garden's own Public Library. It's the busiest street east of Montreal, with over 3,000 pedestrians moving through the area each day, a main transit corridor, and let's face it, it's no stranger to car traffic. Now let's meet our contestants. An avid cyclist hailing from Vancouver, that Canadian capital of spokes and pedals, it's Paul Cloutier! This fearless two-wheeled warrior is ready to take on and take down the competition. This seasoned driver has conquered the open roads of Australia to the traffic chaos of Ecuador, but can he conquer the other competitors? It's Chris Palmer! She might be a California kid that grew up surfing the waves before she ever rode a bus, but don't let that fool you. This girl has mastered transit up and down the west coast. It's Planet Facts' own Megan Reddy. Our competitors will be traveling from the public library to the Hydrostone Market. The trip will be roughly four kilometers, depending on each contestant's chosen path. The distance has been kept short to simulate the average inner city trip, as well as to give each mode of transportation a fighting chance. Now you might be wondering, where's the most common method of getting around the city? Where's our pedestrian? Well, we realize that in a speed race, the pedestrian probably doesn't stand much of a chance. But here at Planifax, we believe that everyone should be given an equal opportunity. So... That's right, I'll be doing my part to uphold the dignity of the noble pedestrian. Alright, are you ready? Ready! On your mark. Get set. Go! <laughs> All right, I'm going to take the 7 from Barrington Street. Got my bus ticket. Am I filming this whole thing? Yep. No, I'm not. I don't know. I mean, he's got a good stride right now. I don't know what his stamina is like. Uh, he's got a partner with him, so we'll see. beat the car, I think just for the sake of, you know, showing that you don't need a car to get around in Halifax. People get out of my way. This is a very important race. I think even if the racers are within like five minutes of each other, it should show that having a car doesn't necessarily give this huge benefit over another one. Everything. Seven. Call out. Transfer, please. I am really wishing I just made that light, but. I feel like it takes so long to get out of the parking structure and that everyone else is probably like has a quite a head start. And these lights just take forever. And then of course one of my biggest issues is having to find parking at the end, where Paul can just bike directly there.
Oh, this like could change any time though. Side of driving in the city. Soon, soon. Getting off at the next stop. They're over there. It at the parking. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, I saw you guys just come up like down the street. Yeah. yeah. So, good job. Thank you, thank All you. All right. <laughs> Let's hope that Brandon isn't close yet. cycling as a way to get around, especially in the city. Don't have to worry about uh, parking at all, so. I think one of the advantages I had was with the transit, I can track it live on Google Maps, so I knew exactly when my bus was coming and exactly when I was going to get there. The biggest advantage of being a driver is the speed that I get to travel. Uh, getting up to 50 kilometers an hour in pretty much every shot between lights. It's just nice, I just basically got on the bus, sat down, and let the bus do its thing, so I didn't have to worry about anything. I was gonna get there at some point, whether or not I liked it. Well, cycling is definitely a fast way to get around, although it is definitely, if you are not uh, in the best shape, it could be a little bit more difficult. Biggest disadvantage is you just can't bet on traffic. So you can get stuck behind someone going incredibly slow, and then that's the speed that you get to travel, where other people can go around that a little bit better. I guess a disadvantage would be like, I can't bring like a snack or a coffee on the bus in case I get hungry, but in this case, it wasn't a long enough ride that it really mattered. Um, if the weather had been wet or, you know, uh, colder, it could be a little bit unpleasant. Have to pack some more gear. Pedestrians, um, the crossing the road, everything like that, that's potentially really hard because you just can't plan for something like that. So you think it's the pedestrian's fault that you take in second? Always, always the pedestrian's fault. So, did I win? Did you win? <laughs> you won in our hearts. That's all that matters. There you go, folks, the amazing transportation race. And while our cyclists may have won this time, with bike lanes, bus lanes, driverless cars, and even the Hyperloop, who knows what the future of the crazy transportation race will be. It was um, not a bad ride, although it would be nice if there was uh, bike lanes that went the whole way. So. I'd like to see like a bus priority lane. A couple times we missed the lights because we were stuck behind other cars that were trying to turn and the bus isn't skiddy enough to get around them. Dedicated bike lanes and bus lanes would definitely help the people who are driving really well um, get those out of my lane and then I have a clear shot of getting to the, where I want to go. Next time we do this, I'm going to beat that bike. There's no way I'm losing to a bike again. <laughs> I feel like Jeremy Clarkson would hate me.